4K. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Magnus from uh, Pirat Byron. <laughs> or actually, Pirat Byron doesn't exist anymore, so I'm just Magnus now. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a strange talk. It's called uh, The Prehistory of Pirat Byron. Uh, and Pirat Byron itself is often considered or talked about as a kind of a prehistory in itself to the things that came out of it. Mostly known is uh, the Pirate Bay, which was uh, one of the side products started by Pirat Byron. Um, and by the way, I'm going to say hi to everyone from uh, Brokep, from the Pirate Bay, he told me to do that. Uh, and another thing uh, it's talked about as a prehistory too is, is uh, the Swedish Pirate Party and then all, all the other Pirate Parties, which uh, wasn't started by Pirat Byron, but it's kind of came out of of the whole uh, file sharing debate in Sweden that was started by Pirat Byron. And uh, Pirat Byron existed from 2003 to 2009, and it consisted of a group of, uh, I would say, about uh, 20 friends, and sometimes enemies, um, that mostly were hanging out on IRC and, and in each other's apartments, uh, but sometimes also doing some uh, a little bit more extrovert things for other people. So this was the website, and as you can see, I, I, can only, I will only show stuff from archive.org, so this is, this is truly prehistory. Um, so Pirat Miron started as a website that we, we put up uh, translating news about uh, piracy and intellectual property, together with some guides of how to file share. Uh, yeah. Um, some articles, uh, theoretical articles about piracy, and we had a forum that got really big. Um, we also did some some demonstrations. Uh, where is my mouse pointer? Does anyone see my mouse pointer? Oh, there. <laughs> uh, okay, so we did some uh, protests. This is like a picture from one of the early ones uh, around 2004. Um, we had this uh, famous slogan called uh, the welfare begins at 100 megabit. So that was kind of what we were about. And this is actually uh, Gottfried from the Pirate Bay who is now in uh, jail in Sweden. But here he has uh, a CD with 23,000 uh, signatures about an issue I don't remember <laughs> where it was actually. We wanted to stop something. Yeah, anyway, let's continue. Um, another thing we did was this concept called uh, Copy Me, which was uh, a logo uh, and a uh, concept and a graphics, a lot of graphics that looked kind of like this. This is the Copy Me logo. And Copy Me is basically just encouraging, a way to encourage people to copy what you do instead of trying to regulate how people can't copy it, basically. And I don't know how many people read the Bible, but if you read the Bible, you can sort of follow the story of how it turns into all of this. Uh, and then the internet comes, as you can see, through the cassette of this. And it turns into copy me. Um, there's another similar one, a more secular version of this history, featuring the evolution of man and yeah, you can see the kind of Britney Spears and Osama Bin Laden was kind of in the uh, in the news at the time. Nowadays, Copy Me is uh, an officially recognized church in Sweden, um, which, uh, among other things, means that the protection between uh, of, of speech between priests is uh, protected by law, so it can't be w uh, wiretapped or anything like that. And as the Mormon church, everyone who is, is a member of the church is also a priest. So this can, can be a very good thing. Uh, and another thing we did was, uh, or most of the things we did of these kind of extrovert things was uh, talking a lot to the media uh, in the file sharing debate. That turned into, yeah, 
actually the name Piratbyrån comes because there was another organization called Anti Piratbyrån uh, first, who was the representatives of Hollywood in Sweden. So we had to call ourselves Piratbyrån, so they, they had something to be against, basically. So there was a lot of talk about us in media, and uh, this actually just going to show how far this went, that we're actually in, in this kind of Hollywood movie here. Natasha Petrovna, born and raised in St. Petersburg, graduate degree in computer security from Lomonsov University, now a member of the Swedish-founded Pirate Bureau. Card-carrying anarchist. Card-carrying anarchist. I don't know what that means, card-carrying. What kind of card is that? Is it it's like a business card or a credit card? Or a, yeah. Um, and this debate got kind of, uh, we got kind of tired after it, after, after a while. Uh, because he was only asking the same questions all over again. So we had to end it. And this is a, a movie about when we make this kind of ritual to bury the fire debate. And the music is one of our great inspirations. <laughs> Can you see for the chairs? Welcome to Pirate Bureau's Valboll's Ritual year 2007. Fyra bokboll. Vi kommer idag att slutge den sätta punkt för fildelningsdebatten. Samma fildelningsdebatt som vi tidigare sett till att inleda har nu tjänat sin tid. När Piratbyrån startade för fyra år sedan fanns inte den diskussionen som finns idag. Det fanns antipirater vars ord fick stå oemotsagda. Men framförallt fanns det fildelningsnätverk där det pågick en kopiering eh, som saknar motstycke i historien. Det som till att... Eh, Lyfta fram den kopieringen i ljuset. Nu är det dags att gå vidare. Efter två års verksamhet samlade vi texterna från vår hemsida i en bok, Copy Me. Den här boken är det enda bestående och brännbara dokument från de år som gått. Genom att förstöra det dokumentet vill vi sätta undan de förfrusna ställningarna och ge plats för nya. Allt har sin tid och val på tiden för att röra ut det gamla och ge plats för vårens le... Vad står det? Lekar. Eh... Härmed bränner vi i fyra bokboll motsatsbar som vi är färdiga med och som vi bryter sönder sig själva inifrån. Vi kan se vad det är om plastikdisk, är det som ett av de otaliga sätt att kopiera. Vi talar om bättre och sämre. This is what we do every uh, first of May, uh, uh, end of April in Sweden. <laughs> Another one of our uh, bigger projects was uh, getting this bus and um, repairing it and decorating it and travel around Europe with it. Uh, so this is from it's when it's in Italy. 
And, and this one has actually been here in, in Croatia, although we only stopped at like a highway restaurant. That was it, with some folk costumes and stuff. Um, and this was uh, turning to be one of our longer projects. So we went to Italy and then around the Balkans and then up to um, Stockholm back when uh, the Pirate Bay trial happened. So it was kind of a media center during the Pirate Bay trial. And um, like I said in the beginning, uh, like Pirat Biron was mostly a bunch of friends who uh, were mostly just hanging out as friends. And this is kind of the exceptions, the, the things we did more for more public things. So this was a way of uh, taking people who um, mostly spend time online with each other uh, and putting them, 23 of them, in a bus going throughout Europe uh, where you can't really you can't really just close the window or shut down the computer to get rid of other people. You, when you travel in a bus on a highway, you're really kind of stuck with each other. So it's just very different dynamics of sociality than, than the internet to, to sit a week in a bus together where you spend 24 hours a day with each other and you really have to take care of, of everything. And, around. and it also was a good learning point that you can't just um, buy a bus and drive it, like you, you start up a computer or something, especially an old bus like this. It's constantly breaking down and you have to always build up everything, always. Um, then I'm actually mostly showing lots of videos here, as you know, notice. Um, we did this thing during the um, Pirate Bay trial called uh, Copy Me TV which I will show some of. And this kind of captures, I think, uh, a kind of a mentality we had that uh, everything produced by like the, the copyright industry from yeah, media, music, films, everyone, is a really good source that you can just take uh, and do something with it. It's like a really good raw material. So for this Copy Me TV, oops, it opens in another player. Um, Hello, it, was yeah, just, uh, no? <laughs> it was just like uh, some new subtitles to some films, and you can really change the, the meaning of them. It refers to Kennedy here. That's, um, what's his name? Jack Kennedy? What? Robert Kennedy, <laughs> who was the president of uh, MPIA at the time. And he, IFPI, okay. <laughs> Long time ago. And he was part of the Pirate Bay trial. Hello, yeah, Curtis. No, <laughs> we get in. Nein, die Reaktion der Herren in Bonn sind zurzeit eher negativ. Wir haben gerade so etwas wie eine Hetze gegen Datenverarbeitung, eine Kampagne in den Medien sozusagen. Verstehen Sie? Jedenfalls will Bonn gerade jetzt keine neuen Aufträge für Computer erteilen. Und zudem hat es in Deutschland in letzter Zeit absolut keine neuen Terroraktionen gegeben. Wenn ich das Leben verliere, würde ich alles das verlieren. Keine Verkaufsargumente also. Die Situation ist eben nicht mehr so günstig wie in den letzten Jahren. Das bedeutet natürlich, dass wir entscheidende Argumente finden. Organisierte Kultur, Sport und Sprachfilm. Die Bibliothek des gebildeten Menschen. Ja, da haben Sie allerdings recht. Wie man ein Kind adoptiert. Schüler, Eltern... Also ich kann Ihnen nur eines sicher sagen. Im Moment lässt sich hierzulande kein einziger Computer verkaufen. Kein einziger, glauben Sie mir. Aber das wird sich ändern. Glauben Sie mir, das wird sich ändern. Sie können sich da ganz auf mich verlassen. Der erfolgreiche Mann. Steuerliche Vergünstigung für Eltern. I'm going to show some more episodes because it's, it's a kind of a developing story here. Here's Kennedy is being now being converted to, to the internet here. Mi hai fatto trovare la soluzione giusta della mia vita. Prima io non conoscevo gli uomini, ma avevo paura di loro, ecco. Amavo soltanto mio padre. Ma adesso, lasciandomi, non solo mi fai riprecipitare indietro, ma mi fai andare ancora più indietro. È questo che volevi. Adesso il dolore di perderti causerà in me una ricaduta, molto più pericolosa ancora del male che era dentro di me. 
prima di questa mia breve guarigione, dovuta alla tua presenza. Prima quel male non lo riconoscevo, ma adesso sì. Attraverso il bene che tu mi hai fatto, ho preso coscienza del mio male. E adesso, come potrò sostituirti? Ma forse esiste qualcuno che può sostituirti? Credo che io non potrò più vivere. <ride> Tu sei certamente venuto qui per distruggere. In me la distruzione che hai causato non poteva essere più totale. Hai distrutto semplicemente l'idea che io ho sempre avuto di me. Ora io non riesco a vedere assolutamente niente che possa reintegrarmi nella mia identità. Che cosa mi proponi? Uno scandalo simile a una morte civile una perdita completa di me stesso. Ma come può far questo un uomo abituato all'idea dell'ordine, del domani e soprattutto del possesso? I want to take one more episode. The third one is good. Weltans Wille und Vorstellung. Kommt dir das nicht auch irgendwie bekannt vor, Opa? Das ist von Schopenhauer. Was? Welt als Wille und Vorstellung. Das ist Philosophie, weißt du? Aber zu meiner Zeit, da haben wir positivere Sachen gelesen. Hegel, Kant oder Nietzsche. Und was ist so negativ an dem anderen Zeug? Na ja, das ist doch ganz einfach. Dieser Schopenhauer sagt, die Existenz eines Menschen ist nicht wichtiger als die eines Steines. Und das ist ganz dumm. Aber das ist doch ganz sogar unsinnig, nicht wichtiger als ein Stein. Sag ich doch. Das ist was für Leute, die nichts Rechtes mit ihrem Leben anfangen können. Für die muss wieder ein Krieg her. Dann werden sie bald merken, dass ihr Leben mehr wert ist als nur ein Stein. There we go. Um. Okay, that... I want to show one last thing before we go into the prehistory. And this is a kind of a hit song we made. Um. No, okay. <laughs> that's actually uh, not the right one. Just this is the song. Pirates of the internet. We are pirates of the world wide web. Nothing's gonna stop us now. I'm just going to show um, a live performance of this one also. 
that was done in, in Venice, together with some um, people from Venice. This is during the Venice Biennial, this huge uh, art uh, biennial, which is um, mostly kind of run by volunteers who work for free because they want to get like a foot into the art world, although it's very like a commercial uh, event. So this was like a little protest action against this use of volunteers. So we go out in boats, you can see. And this is kind of coming in the back door of the festival area through the canals. I'm just gonna skip a little bit, it's a bit long. We board here, and this is kind of banner. Let's go to the live performance. And this is like a private uh, art gallery that they were just opening here. And these Matrix guys are trying to uh, like prevent us from going there. Then uh, there is like a um, Italian police. And there is some fans that goes into the water and they are the art opening. Okay, so like I said, uh, Pirat Piron started in, in 2003 and in the Swedish context, this means uh, a couple of things. It's, it means that it's uh, post Gothenburg 2001, what, which was this big uh, meeting when George Bush came to Gothenburg, and there was this, yeah, there was big riots, and uh, a guy got shot uh, and almost died, and afterwards a lot of people were thrown in jail, basically for having sent an SMS telling people where a demonstration was, basically. Uh, it's also uh, kind of a post 90s uh, rave scene where in Sweden we had something called the Rave Commission, uh, which was a section of the police whose only job was to uh, go around and shut down rave parties because th their association with drugs. It was also the post IT bubble, so uh, it was like a big Swedish IT bubble that had just crashed basically. Uh, it's also post the Swedish uh, home PC and broadband reform, where the broadband reform was basically a, a state-sponsored expansion of broadband. So a lot of people had like 10 megabits in the beginning of the 2000s with fiber. Uh, and the home PC reform was this uh, reform where if you, through your job, you could get uh, a very cheap PC and you got like a tax reduction for it. So a lot of uh, parents to our generation had gotten this kind of PCs from work, plus had a lot of broadband and had no idea what to do with it. So this was like stationed somewhere in, in the um, apartment and, and no one used it except us sort of teenagers who started to go on, onto the internet. So it's also after this kind of uh, hacker culture also in the 90s. So Pirat Biron basically consisted of, of three groups. Um, some people who came from the more activist uh, scene uh, and was a bit maybe fed up with the activist scene at the time because after Gothenburg 2001 it kind of went into this very individualistic mode of being about sort of private morals and and about yourself rather than something something public sort of. Um, also, the other group were people who came from the hacker scene and also were kind of post-IT workers who had worked in IT companies during the, the IT bubble and then now like didn't have a job, but a lot of time and a lot of skills. And the third group were, were people who were like clubbers, uh, slackers, hustlers who kind of went by for some reason and were partying a lot and stuff. Uh, so these three groups, activists, hackers and, and clubbers kind of came together um, and did some other sites as well before Pirat Biron. So Pirat Biron was like one of them. So I'm gonna go back to uh, 
archive.org, see what we have here. Uh, one was this called vanligt folk, which means just uh, normal people or regular people in Swedish. Uh, and it used this kind of, actually, I think there's more on the website. This is arch the arch archive.org version that lacks something. But it used this kind of uh, stock photo commercial images uh, instead of doing like a site that looked very activist like. Uh, and you can read here about lifestyle, health, uh, extreme sport, beauty, uh, healthy food, and travel. And so uh, this is lifestyle, and it, it's basically a translation of kind of political theory and stuff. Uh, and then uh, this is extreme sport, I think. So one, this is um, from an organization that was formed at the time called Planka, which is the slang for um, kind of joyriding the subway. As you can see, someone is jumping over the gates here. And this organization that still exists has like um, an insurance. If you, you pay a monthly fee to them, and if you get caught in the subway without a ticket, they, you send the fee to them, and they, they pay it for you. So it's kind of like uh, uh, enforcing like a fair fair uh, um, fee in the subway uh, collectively. Um, and this is a site called Asocialstyrelsen, you can't really see. Uh, but it basically Socialstyrelsen is a Swedish government organization that deals with uh, kind of health recommendations, food recommendations, uh, doing all kinds of tests about what healthy and not healthy or good or not good. So we had made an asocial student, which means like the anti antisocial agency or something. And this is what Winona Ryder, who was at the time uh, known for being caught shoplifting. And she was like an inspiration for us. Uh, so this is what the asocial students looked like. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, H&M logo, but it says Heart and Negri instead. Uh, no jobs connecting people. We were kind of into this of not having jobs, and that this was like a good way of living. The only problem was it was hard to to manage, like without without the job. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I'm just gonna show. Oh. This is just some of the things from the site. Um, actually, I'm going to show some of the um, ads. Let's see. Let me see if I can just do this. So this is called uh, Stop Adult Work, uh, or Adult Labor, basically. Um, all the slogans are from like commercials. So this is... Uh, uh, I wonder if not like a McDonald's commercial or something like that. Just do it. Uh, she has just quit her job. Uh, yeah, these are kind of hard to translate, actually. But, um, oops, that's something else. <laughs> this means like um, free uh, free enterprise. Yeah. Um, then there was another uh, site right before called uh, Hagdalen Business School. This was basically a, a site that was like a business school, but for the um, uh, for the suburbs or like the projects. So it featured a lot of text. Um, oh, this is not good, actually. Does anyone know what's going on of the technical people here? Is it me? Is it you or is it me? <laughs> um, this was actually a translation of a text of this fake activist group called the Decadent Action, whose uh, idea was that instead of trying to fight capitalism by not consuming and, and be kind of anti-consumerist, the idea here was to just get as mus much credit card as possible and just spend it uh, on luxury goods uh, and then get new credit cards and so on until everyone is in debt and the whole thing kind of collapses. Uh, on itself. Instead of starving capitalism, you have to make it sort of explode by from being so fat. Um, and this site also featured a, a very good uh, career guide using the kind of concepts from 
from uh, marketing papers and so on. So timekeeping uh, is basically uh, how to um, uh, stay uh, stay in bed late. Do it yourself holidays is calling in sick to work. Uh, I can't really read what everything is. Emotional competence is lying to your boss. <laughs> these kind of things. So it was kind of a lifestyle. And that, that was featured in Pirat Brun as well, that there was more like a lifestyle uh, branding, more or less, than actual kind of activism. And I'm actually just going to show two more films that was done by um, the same guy that did th this Hagdalen Business School, wrote the script for this, and some other one did the animations. The first one is this. And let's see, I have to get some subtitles. And actually, wh what's funny, I don't know how to explain this, but what's funny about this is the voiceover is done by this guy who's a very known actor in Sweden, who always plays like the tough cop in in like uh, films and TV shows. I don't know if you know the Beck films that I think are in English as well. I don't know who to, um, it's not like the Charlton Heston of Sweden, but almost. <laughs> I don't know how to compare it. Brettsamhället har avskaffats. Det har ersatts av en liten snut i din hjärna. Tusentals däckarserier efterlyst Kurt Wallander, Bruce Willis, Kommissarie Winter, Beck och annan snutreklam sätter djupa spår i ditt beteende, föder en liten konstapel i ditt medvetande, en folkhemsnut på spaning, en fetlagd filantrop som dricker lite för mycket och har ett trassligt äktenskap. Någon som minns han kan skilja på rätt och fel. Reklam från H&M får dig att undra hur du kommer att se ut på stranden. Reklam från polisen får dig att kalla ner dina kompisar som knarkar. Och ger dig lite dåligt samvete för att du inte haffade den där pundaren som du såg snatta på konsum. Att de lägger ner polisstationer och avskedar konstaplar har ingenting med besparingar att göra. Polisen behövs inte längre, utom i extrema fall då någon demonstrant måste skjutas. Eftersom alla numera har en polis i hjärnan behövs inte rättssamhället längre. Och det här är ändå bara början. Just nu pågår en nyinspelning av Wallander-serien med Kate Moss i huvudrollen som Kurt Wallander. And, uh, this one says a little bit about the kind of atmosphere in Sweden then, which was that, uh, I mean, it was a very sort of co consensus-based atmosphere, and only in kind of extreme cases were someone involved in uh, protesting or something like that, which is, I mean, different from the world today, where, um, I mean, uh, demonstrators being shot like that is qu quite, quite a common thing. Uh, and this is just the last one about sellouts. I'm going to show this one. I'm looking for my mouse pointer again. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Det är mycket snack om sellouts nu för tiden. Folk som säljer sig till onda makter för små pengar. Som Göran Skytte, Audio Galaxy, Figo och alla hiphoppare med skivkontrakt. Alla som någonsin haft något som helst att göra med en TV, Toyota eller Ku Klux Klan. Anledningen till att det är så mycket snack om sellouts är att någon försöker dölja det faktum att alla människor är till salu. Att vi alla, inte bara några, är sellouts. Jag råkar veta vem denna någon är. Han heter Percy och pensionär. Varje gång du anklagar någon för att vara en sellout istället för att göra revolution stiger Percys pension. 
Därför äger Percy hemlighet ett hiphopskivbolag, ett mediegymnasium, klädmärket Diesel och en massa företag som heter något med Underground. Så du kanske ska sluta gnälla nu på andra och göra något åt saken istället. För tänk om luften du andade smakade hundbajs. Skulle du sluta andas? Skulle du kämpa för renare luft? Eller skulle du peka på Göran Skytte och påstå att han tar djupare andetag än du? Nej, då sa han. Sätt igång. Det är bråttom. Just nu sitter Percy och ett gäng äkta hiphopskallar i en bunker och spelar i ett tv-program för unga om politik som heter Fläsk. Okej. Okay. That's about it. That's a little bit about uh, history and prehistory of Piratbyrån. And uh, yeah, ask me questions later about it. Thanks. <laughs>